Hey everybody, this is the Esoteric Cross. I make videos about how to gain your personal power while learning ancient secrets, and if that sounds like something that you're into, please hit the like button and subscribe and gain insight from this perspective in the cosmos. In this video, we're going to talk about magic and the real truth about what it is. There are so many misconceptions about magic, and these misconceptions can definitely drive a lot of people away from the path of doing this work. There are many people out there who practice magic, but they don't call it by that name. We could be talking about occult work, the great work, initiation, alchemy, or it could even go by other names. The most common thing that you may think of when you hear the word magic might be card tricks or parlor tricks, or maybe you think of it more in the terms of paganism or witchcraft, worshipping different gods and goddesses or deities, doing spells, having an altar, and using various types of incenses, candles, and herbs. When we're talking about true ceremonial magic, we're talking about something that goes much, much deeper than all of that. So let's get into it. One of the best things to dive into in order to learn more about true ceremonial magic is learning more about secret societies. These are groups of people who might be a bit secretive or exclusive. They meet and perform different rituals and rites and ceremonies, and these meetings involve a large amount of symbolism. If you're initiated into one of these societies, it may take you a while to move up in these ranks. And if you're intelligent, intuitive, and balanced, then you'll start to uncover some of the secrets of the universe. Secrets about the way consciousness operates, and the way that you operate. This is self-knowledge, or it can be called gnosis. This is where you find that knowledge is power. You discover your true personal power. Thankfully, you don't really have to join some secret organization in order to uncover these secrets or to find this personal power. There's a countless number of books out there that will tell you the answers to the questions that you may have about consciousness, energy, and philosophy. There are countless podcasts and videos that describe these ideas like the one that you're watching now. You just need to know where to look. Uncovering the knowledge is just one piece of this puzzle. The rest is up to you to do the actual work. The knowledge is dead and useless if you're unable to apply it to everyday life. It's useless unless it changes your consciousness or changes your environment. I was saying that there is a big difference between true ceremonial magic and witchcraft or paganism. And when I say that, I don't mean to put those traditions down in any way. Those can be gateways into ceremonial magic. They can be gateways into alchemy, hermetic philosophies, and discovering other facets of the occult arts. Sometimes, if you have some success with performing spells and working with different deities, it may encourage you to dive deeper into the understanding of these forces, and this can guide you into the deeper wisdom of what you're actually doing. Witchcraft may have this emphasis on burning different herbs and incenses. There may be an emphasis on working with different tools or crystals, stating intentions, working with deities, and there is ceremony involved. True magic is not about creating illusions, tricking people, pulling rabbits out of hats, worshipping some gods or goddesses, or picking one mythology to follow and taking it all at face value. Ceremonial magic is about gaining your power, and it can be about taking your power back. This is about learning how your consciousness truly works. This involves learning about mythologies, ceremonial rituals, energy work, psychology, philosophy, and the process of creation. This is very different than putting your faith into something that you believe is going to come from outside of you. Many people get into magic thinking that it can be some sort of shortcut into getting something that you want, like a job promotion, more money, love, recognition, or success. But what you really find is that this path will show you how to get to the root of these issues and change them from the inside out. Doing this can actually take a lot longer than just going out and applying for jobs or going on dates. You can certainly perform magic with an intention to bring something like money or a job into your life, but you must do the physical equivalent of the effort to get it as well. At the true basis of this is the idea that you are a reflection of the cosmos. You could look at this entire universe as one stream of consciousness, one awareness. This flows into every star, planet, object, animal, and person. You can call this source consciousness, the creator, God, the higher self, or anything else that you want to call it. I usually call it God for the sake of simplicity. 
this consciousness plays out life as these different aspects, there is something much greater going on here than what we were led to believe, and many people are not awake to that fact yet. Performing magic, alchemy, occult work, or working in other systems are all doing the same thing. It's about understanding this consciousness, being able to focus it, transmute energies, and work with different faces of the divine energy. This is the main difference between working with a god, goddess, or deity when you practice witchcraft or paganism versus working with it in ceremonial magic. You realize that you're working with an aspect of yours in the universe's consciousness. You are waking it up and building it up on a regular basis. All magic can be summed up into this little statement, as above, so below. This means that everything here in the microcosm is a reflection of the macrocosm. The way that you work is a reflection of the way that the universe works. Magic works because when you change one, you change the other. Sure, you might want to get that new job that you think will make you happy. You can perform a spell, work with a deity, light some special incense, and hope that you get the job. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Suppose you do get that job, and now what? What changed within your consciousness? Maybe you have more money. Maybe you feel like you're at a higher status than before. How long is this going to last? You make more money, and you have more responsibilities at work. Are those extra responsibilities worth it? Typically, when people make more money, they spend more money. Are you happy? This isn't about performing a spell when you feel like you need something quickly. Ceremonial magic is a path and a daily dedication. These are rituals that you perform every single day in order to build up your energy and to focus your consciousness and awareness. This will be the key to getting in touch with your intuition, pulling out information from the subconscious, programming the subconscious, finding out what makes you fulfilled in life, learning to be able to focus your attention on your purpose for long periods of time, being able to gain success and maintain that success, and being able to make changes. Let's say you do a spell to gain a bunch of money very quickly. And let's say that you succeed and a lot of money falls into your lap. It's very likely that money will not last for a long period of time. Most people who win the lottery spend all of their money very quickly. This is because nothing changed within their consciousness. You have to change yourself, your spending habits, work on your time management, find out your plan to make this money and maintain it, adjust when challenges come your way, and you have to learn and study about money. You need to build your foundation first. Once this foundation is put down, then you can move on to the next step, and then the next. If you keep doing this, you'll eventually get to your goal, and you will have the intelligence to be able to maintain that goal. There will be more fulfillment within this process. So let's talk about what the path of magic looks like. Most people don't even know that magic is a path. This is about initiation into a higher state of consciousness. Within the Golden Dawn system of ceremonial magic, there's a very specific path laid out, and this can kind of seem strange without the crucial information that this is all about consciousness and the different aspects of it. There's a few different charts that you can look at to view this breakdown of consciousness. The first part of the journey in magic is to balance the four elements, earth, water, fire, and air. These are the four corners to the foundation that you're building, and they are the four aspects of your personal consciousness. Before we can create sustainable change in our environment, we must create sustainable change within ourselves. Earth is your physical body, your health, your sense of work, and your finances. This is the way that you grow. Working with this will help you to grow and focus on your health and become more balanced with your work and finances. Water is your emotional body, your feelings, flow, change, adaptability, and your sense of fulfillment. Working with this is going to bring about more emotional intelligence and maturity. Fire is your spiritual body, your drive, desire, ambition, excitement, and ability to burn away the obstacles that are in front of you. This is your force. Working with this will bring about more energy, creativity, and passion. Air is your mental body, your thoughts, communication, and intellect. Working with this will bring you a more clear mind and help you with gaining knowledge. The goal here is to separate consciousness into its four parts and purify them. We then strengthen them and then reintegrate them. Then we have a strong foundation to move on to planetary work. The planets are the next step of this path, and this is going to be about our connection to the external world. 
These are going to be more potent energies and more specific energies that will aid you in creating change within your environment. There are seven planets to the ancients, and you may see this diagram of the geocentric model to represent this. This is not about Earth being at the center of the solar system. It's truly about Earth, aka the body and the individual, being at the center. And then these planets are the layers of our aura, or the layers of our consciousness that connect us to the outside world. The moon is about subconscious energies. This is showing us our astral layer, and it's the substance that connects us to others in an intuitive way. Mercury is representing our communication, thoughts, intellect, and study, much like the element of air, but this is showing us the qualities as it pertains to making change in the external. Venus is our passion, emotions, creativity, and our nurturing aspects. This is our love. The sun is the light and the truth. It's our care, willpower, and action. This is the spot in the journey where we commit and make contact with our true higher aspects. Mars is the more aggressive energy that is needed to break through the barriers and the obstacles that are in our way. And Jupiter will represent the expansiveness and the success after breaking through these. Saturn is our discipline, karma, and it has some correspondences to ego death and the rebirth of the ego. We move from these planetary energies into the zodiacal energies, and this is going to get a little bit too deep for this one video. You should check out my video titled, No, the Zodiac is Really Not What You Think, for more information on this. These energies are going to show you how you work, and this will show you the mechanics of the universe. This isn't just about sitting here reading information and watching these videos. You put in the work and you start going through your path to actually see it and experience it for yourself. Some other ways that you can view this path is by viewing the major arcana in tarot and also examining the Kabbalistic Tree of Life, both of which you will use heavily on your path. The Tree of Life will show you the journey from Malkuth, which is the 3D physical reality and corresponds to Earth and the four elements. This journey takes you through the planetary energies and into the zodiacal and angelic energies and finally into Kether, which represents the light of divinity. The major arcana in tarot shows us our journey of self-knowledge working with the elements and developing our strength, going through transformations, descending into darkness, and having a rebirth, reuniting with light and sharing it out to others and the world. That is what this journey is. That is what magic is. The first ritual that you work with in ceremonial magic is the LBRP, which stands for the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram. This ritual is designed to separate consciousness into its four elements and purify them. You do this ritual two times per day until you feel like you've memorized it and gained benefits from it. Then you can move on to some of the others. This ritual is foundational within magic, and I have a couple videos about it here on this channel. But I'm making another video on this ritual, which will be posted after this video. I have an exciting announcement that I've put together a live course on beginning ceremonial magic, and you can check this out in the link in the description below. It starts on October 5th, and I would love to have you there. I also offer a course on studying tarot with Kabbalah, and that also starts in October. We look at the cards side by side with the Kabbalistic Tree of Life, which is something that most courses in tarot don't offer. If you want to work one-on-one -on -one with me, I do offer coaching as well. Just check out the link in the description to see what kinds of things that I offer, and you can also book a tarot reading with me. The link to my Patreon is also down in the description below if you're interested in some live streams. And I hope there was something new that you were able to take away from this video. If so, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe for more content. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.